and listen to music and she would teach me how to crochet. And she told Carmen, one day you will pass this down to your daughter as my grandmother passed it on to me. But I was only nine, so I said, Grandma, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm only nine. And um, because she was already putting the idea of like, you know, when you have kids, and I was only nine, I wasn't thinking of that. But um, we took a trip from Colima to Yakima. And on that trip, I was going through all the safety information on the plane, and there was a magazine, a travel magazine, that featured Argentina as a place to visit. And it had never occurred to me that I could go anywhere else besides Colima and Yakima. It was really odd to think that why would anybody else want to go visit a place where they don't know anyone? So um, I think that's where my love for travel and wanting to go to Latin America started. Um, and I ha do have a nice map of Argentina and all that in America. But so when I started my education at the University of Washington, I started to study international studies of Latin America with a double major in Spanish because I really wanted to go to Argentina. And, um, but I made plans and I had this wonderful plan and of course we all make plans but they don't always uh, end up the way we would like them to. My sophomore year, I had to move back to Yakima because I could no longer afford to, one, be living over there. And uh, I had a little daughter while I was over there. So it was really, really hard. And I do have a picture of her. That's Valeria. And I couldn't, um, I just needed that safety blanket and I decided to come home. So that year that I was, came back. I wasn't really doing anything. I had a, a job. It paid the bills. But it was really hard to know what I wanted to do. So I saw my mom come home every day from the packing house. And I knew that that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I enrolled at Heritage University and started my degree in business administration. And in one of my business classes, a professor mentioned that they were going down to uh, Guinea Grass, Belize. And it occurred to me that um, I could possibly go. And I would, you know, one way or another, um, be doing that uh, traveling that I always wanted to do. He said, think of a project, a secondary project that we can go to this village and implement. They were taking a chicken coop project um, that they were going to give to 14 families and um, really just kind of help them with the idea of being a micro business in their community. So they said, go home and think of different ideas that you could utilize um, these bags with uh, a project. So make a project out of it. So I went home and so I really wanted to go to Guinea Grass. And I started to do some research and research until I finally came up with what I think um, is a good solution to utilizing these bags. So what I did was the next day, of course, I went to my professor. But I, was, I cut this bag, cut the ends off. And so then it kind of looks like this. I rolled it up, so I have it here, and I went to my professor and I said, so I think I might have found a way to be able to utilize these bags. And he said, um, well, I'll show you real quickly. Um, so I went home and I showed him what I had done, and I had crocheted three plastic bags together. and. Um, I said, Carmen, that is a really neat idea, but unfortunately, we don't have any money for you to go. And it's kind of like bummer, you know? <laughs> but, because I had spent my whole night um, researching and crocheting, and um, 
I said, you know, well, you know, okay. But he said, if you can find the money to go to Belize, the door is open. So I was also part of Student Government Association at Heritage University. And many students had gone through the process of presenting proposals. So I said, well, I'm going to write a proposal and present it to SGA. So I did. I went to SGA and um, I asked them if, well, presented my proposal. So the next day I got an email saying, um, Carmen, you got the money. So I was going to Guinea Grass. And um, so I will show you the next slide in comparison to what my project meant from a uh, project that was a chicken coop and my project. So, and that's just a landfill of plastic bags. But in essence, that was the project that the uh, other group of students were going to be implementing. So most of the energy or most of the time that the students were going down was to really focus on that project. That was their kit. And as you can see, that was my kit. So in comparison, it wasn't really much valuable. This was um, worth about $400, and mine wasn't even $4. So um, you could really see the, the comparison. And I said, you know, if I get two women to be able to just really engage them and be able to um, spread this idea, then I'm good. You know, I, I would have felt that I would have done something for the women. So the first day, we had about 10 women who wanted to learn. And they really wanted to be able to do something out of garbage. Because this is what they thought the plastic bag was, garbage. So the next day, we had 10 more women. And the following day, they just kept, kept spreading the word. And by the end of the 10 days that we were there, we had over 65 women who, we, I ran out of kits. I only took 15 kits, so by the third day, they were gone, but they did not care that they weren't um, going to be provided with a kit. They just wanted to be able to learn how to use garbage and to make it into something profitable. So, um, as you can see, they range from different uh, ages and, uh, we're teaching them how to crochet. They didn't know how to crochet. So I was able to pass down something that my grandmother taught me, which was really special to me. So as you can see, and at the end of the day, or at the end of our stay there, right before we left, we went to another village, uh, San Esteban. And we taught the teachers uh, that um, had been collecting the bags, the students had been collecting bags. And um, they were just really excited about this project. But these are the bags that the women made out of garbage bags. So, and uh, the bags in Belize range from all kinds of colors. And you can really see that all they needed was not so much a hook and scissors, but an idea to get them going to where they wanted to. So if they sold two bags, they were able to provide just as much money as their husbands would in a one, one week's wages cutting sugar cane. So it was really important for the women to be able to do this. So when we got back about two weeks later, uh, we received our first shipment, so we were able to uh, sell it to some of the professors at the uh, university and students and family. We were able to send $2,000 back to them and they were just really excited that we had gone over there and taught them how to do something with garbage. But to be able to send them money back, they were just really excited. And so just more pictures of them. And that is Stephanie, she's only 13. Um, but she really, really loved this project because she wasn't able to continue her education because her parents said, you know, you're only going to go to go find a husband, so you're staying here. So to be able to give her this opportunity, it was just really, she was really grateful. 
And um, I do want to end my presentation with this slide because the idea that a handful of crochet hooks changed the village. It cleaned up the streets because garbage was no longer garbage. And um, we gave him an idea to be able to further their lives, be able to buy um, school supplies for their kids, and just be an equal with their husband. So thank you. Thank you.